All right, guys, so I would have loved to do this in real time. Um, my power came back on at 12 o'clock, and I've been testing since about, let's say, um, quarter past, maybe 20 past 12. So I've been testing RAM for like maybe an hour, not even, um, with my new CPU. Um, obviously, I had data from my previous OC, uh, from my old CPU, of what the RAM could more or less do. Um, I found that the limits are a bit extended with this new IMC, because the IMC is obviously stronger. Um, you can boot 7400, but... I found that to get it daily stable, to actually get it to start, you know, running HCI and not erroring immediately, you need to start even at 1.6 volts. Like, that's what you need to even get it to run the test, like, begin the test with all the threads. To get to, like, a stable configuration, I'm going to guess around 1.65, honestly. So, that would mean that 7400 is doable in MDI, but just not practical. I mean, if you had a liquid cooler, uh, and when I mean liquid, I mean, like, a liquid cooling setup, like a full custom loop with... um you know, liquid, uh, liquid cooling randoms, or oh, sorry, a uh, dim, what you, what you call it, heat sink, sorry, you're like, you're like, you know, um, like RAM blocks, sorry, RAM blocks, so if you had RAM blocks, and you had a good, a good, like, liquid cooling setup at home, with like, you know, a Mora, or maybe two Moras, because obviously you've got to dissipate the, the CPU and GPU heat, um, otherwise the RAM won't actually benefit from the liquid cooling, um, because if you're dumping heat from the, the more, the more warm components, um, on a custom loop, RAM actually will suffer, because, if your custom loop can't, can barely handle the, the warm stuff, then the RAM itself with its, you know, what is this like, look at the output, like 6 watt output, is, it's going to be suffering. You know, this is 6 watts is producing this kind of dim temp on air, right? So, yeah, that's a quick lesson real quick. But RTL's trained pretty good. Um, and this seems like it will run and run stable. I, I don't foresee this erroring. It might error, but hoping not. Um... Currently, timings are almost identical, just a bit changed for this data rate. Uh, voltage is 1.5, so very low. Um, like I said, you need like 1.65 to run 7,400. So 1.5 is pretty much indicative of the IC's um, realistic, safe maximum. Uh, you know, temps are not that cold right now, so these will run a bit warm right now when testing. Um, right now, SA is 1.2 and TX is 1.4. That's about standard. Um, VD2 is 1.5, that matches VD on the dock uh, and some other boards. Um, on the MSI boards and ASUS boards, you've got to change it up a bit, but it's harder to do. And uh, yeah, I mean, good luck to all those owners. But for the dock, you can actually leave it auto and it's fine. Same as Gigabyte, Gigabyte, you can leave it auto as well. It's fine. Um, SA wanted it auto to like 1.35, that's way too freaking high for this kind of data rate. So I dropped it down to 1.2 and it's running fine. Uh, funny enough, I found that you need less SA for 1T. So if I try 1T, I might, you know, give that a shot later on with the uh, lower SA and see if it runs. But um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy with this. So I'm, I've, I'm basically extracting an extra 200 mega transfers for 30 millivolts of drain voltage uh, compared to my last CPU. Uh, timing's almost identical, like I said. So yeah, this looks good. Uh, Raptor Lake's IMC is quite strong. Uh, MDI is running very well on Raptor Lake. Uh, you need a die to do 8,000 or, you know, whatever, anything like that. Uh, so a die does have a place, of course. But if you have M die and you don't want to, you know, pay a bunch of money for an a die kit, I would suggest keeping it. Um, I paid 165 ish for this kit and it's doing really well. I honestly do not see myself upgrading to, to a die anytime soon. Because think about it realistically, right? If I can get 8,000 on an OC out of a die, but the a die kit costs me like. $300. That's almost double the money I paid for my current kit. So why would I pay almost double for like 800 mega transfers more? Like going from 7200 to 8000 is like, I mean, why would you pay double? It's silly, right? It's it's very stupid. Uh, well, I mean, it's not stupid, but it's just like, I mean, it's not, it's not like double the performance, is it? Like it's it's like maybe, maybe like 400 points in Geekbench 3 kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, and that's, that's to say you're getting 8000. What if your kid can only do a seven hundred? Because I mean, not all A die is good enough to eight thousand. Eight thousand is like what seven thousand two hundred was with Alder Lake and M die. It's like the eight thousand stable would be like absolute gold standard. Um, above eight thousand is doable, but not really for daily operation yet. I haven't seen any five hundred percent eight thousand four hundred OCs. I haven't seen anything actually. I haven't seen anything new from anyone. I don't know why exactly, but uh, I haven't seen any. Um, real like past stress test yet uh, probably because people are just testing right now 
But yeah, this this didn't take me very long. Um, and I think I got lucky because this IMC has just been a blast to work with. This CPU core OC is great. I'm at 5.6 on the P cores, 4.4 in the E cores, 4.8 in the ring. Um, 1.36 set. And uh, yeah, I'm actually errored, so I have to go adjust this. But yeah, so we errored at 80%. So I'm going to make a change probably. Uh, I'll have to decrease something. Uh, well, I mean, like, you know, increase the timing, basically decrease the latency. Oh, sorry, what am I saying? I'll have to increase the timing, increase the latency, or either that or add a little bit more voltage. But yeah, um, this is not a bad sign. It's a good start. I think I'll be able to do 7200 without much problems. Um, I found that around, if you err around this area, you can you can fix it pretty pretty easily. Um, so yeah, let me get back to that. And yeah, Raptor Lake's looking pretty good so far. But yeah. All right, so I'm testing again. Uh, well, what am I saying again? I've been testing for like the last two hours, almost two hours on the dot now. Um, so I started at 20 past one, it's now 20 past three. So two hours in and I've pretty much kind of like figured it out more or less. So it seems that um, I'm gonna have to bring people down, back down to earth. Uh, I really don't wanna do that, but it's unfortunately necessary. Um, the Raptor Lake IMC is really good for sure, but it can't work wonders. Like it's not magical, right? So yesterday when I was testing my friend Morgan's, well, yesterday was like two days ago, I was testing Morgan's um, 13.7 KF in his DDR4 board before we upgraded to DDR5. And we pretty much got him uh, like D4 4000 C15 in like an hour because I already knew the settings because the kid I sold him ha could do 4000 on the chip I had before, but um, back when I was on D4, before I went to D5. But um, his IMC on uh, all delay couldn't handle 4000. It was just really bad. So, yeah. The 13700KF that he has could do 4000 at like 1.25 SA, and that translates to about 2000 megahertz on the IMC clock it can do, which is what I found. Uh, I can do 7200, so about 1800 megahertz on the IMC at 1.25 SA, and probably up to 4000, probably up to 8000 mega transfer, so like 2000 megahertz at 1.25 SA. Um, Yo, know, 1.2 is not quite enough, it seems. It seems like 1.2 was erroring me. Um, so you need 1.25. I don't think you need 1.3, 1.35 until like you get to way later later frequencies, maybe like 40. Um like for DDR4, 4200, you might need 1.35. For uh DDR5, 8400, you might need 1.35. Because obviously it's not a it's not a linear graph, it's it's an exponential graph. The, the harder the the harder the, the, the frequency on the IMC and the and the uncore like the the larger the amount of SA like required becomes. Funny enough, Raptalic has changed the way Uncore and SA scale. Like the way the, the voltage is, is is arranged. So look at this. So if you can notice, um you need one like the the uncore vid is one point three five, but my SA that I that I typed in is one point two five, which is very weird. Um makes me question like what's up there like so so it wants 1.35 for the uncore but it's uh, i'm supplying 1.25 and they say i don't know i just don't feel like dailying 1.35 so i'm not leaving it auto um because it'll match the two if you leave it auto but yeah so anyway to get to the the further bad news and by the way like yeah like that's considering like let's say my chip isn't a golden sample this is not a bad sample like what i'm doing right now it, it seems to be behaving very very respectably like this is not a bad sample at all. Um, unfortunately, guys, the truth is, like, it doesn't matter how good your IMC is or how good your motherboard is. It's always been like this. The RAM kit still has its own limits, right? So if you can do, like, if your kit, okay, so for example, from like 9th gen to 10th gen, okay? The Comet like IMC was a lot better than the, the Coffee like IMC, but that doesn't mean that you could take a kit that you could do like 4,000, C15 with at 1.5 volt on Coffee Lake and then go to Comet Lake and be like, oh, drop it in the golden i9. Like, let's let's do 4200 now at the exact same settings. Like, no, that, that's not how it works. The kit was, was you know, already straight, struggling at 1.5 volts at 4000 C15. How are you going to add 200 mega transfers for free? Right? Now, I was kind of skeptical last week when I was seeing people boot 
seventy four hundred. I'm not gonna say the the name. It's not his fault. Like he's a he's a YouTuber too. You guys already know who he is. Um, it's not his fault. He's not an idiot. It's just that maybe he maybe he didn't realize what was happening. Um, so he was booting like seventy four hundred on the Unify X, and he I think he even got seventy six hundred. Also got seventy six hundred. Um, you're not gonna get a stable because if a person was doing okay, let's say they were doing one point five volts, which is a reasonable voltage for 6800 c30 or whatever 6800 c32 or something okay and like i'm doing 1.47 volt 47 volts for uh for 7000 c34 for whatever you can't just go like on the next gen like and then have a better imc but like oh cool i'm doing 7200 now at the exact same settings it's like why 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 would that happen like the ic's themselves have to switch at the, at the frequency so how, how are you gonna just because remember when you when you decrease the when you decrease the timing or you increase the, the, the frequency, the switching frequency of the IC, um, you're decreasing access latency. You're decreasing the latency at all the timings. Each timing gets fired that much faster, which is exactly how they, they manage the production of, the, of DDR RAM, of the chips. It's like, you know, they, JDEC specifies certain um, categories of ICs, and they have to, they have to meet certain um, reasonable categories um, where a reasonable amount of chips that get, that get manufactured should hit x uh timing latency so the problem is now right if i'm at 7000 c34 now early in the video that i have this video that i'm that i'm making early in the video i was at what 7200 c34 and i was trying to run it and it was like almost running it like errored at 80 percent, right and the thing is i'm at 1.5 volts so you add a 30 milli millivolts to try and decrease the cas um the cas x latency and then every other timing because obviously um the data rate affects every single timing, or the clock speed, I guess you'd say, but data rates, double data rate. So every single timing's access latency went down because you upped the clock speed. The problem is that adding 30, 30 millivolts might not have been enough to actually um, accommodate that that change in latency, and all the timings weren't happy. So it aired 80% because it was like, you know, it ran, and then it aired eventually because a timing fired and it misfired, and it, it just aired. It, it didn't... It, it, the RAM couldn't complete the operation in time. It, it errored. So, like, there was a wrong there was a wrong bit sent. Like, there was a bit flip, right? So, um, then I tried, like, 7,000... Uh, sorry, 7,200C34 at, like, um, 1.53 volts. I, that didn't help things. I tried 1.47 volts, made it worse. So, I realized that I got up, but 1.53 wasn't helping. So, I have to go up from 1.5, but 1.53 isn't helping... What does it tell me? It tells me that 1.55 is not going to help, and that means that effectively what's happening is the data rate itself needs a certain voltage, and the timings need to be accommodated within that voltage range to get the RAM system to be stable. Because the thing is, you don't. It's not just timing related. It's also um, the data rate itself might not be happy at a certain voltage. It might need more volts for the data rate, but then the timings might need to come down because. The training breaks if you have too much voltage and the timings are too slow because now you're not using the voltage supply enough. Like, it's weird how it works, but that's kind of how it works. Um, so I'm now at a data rate and a timing configuration that seems to be somewhat happy. Um, and it's not that low. And that's the sad truth. Because it turns out that 7,200 requires... Uh, well, it might, not, it might require a bit less, but right now, 1.6 volts. So... On these ICs I have on these on this Hynix MDI, it was one point six volts for seven thousand two hundred is, is is seeming to be rock solid, um, and the timings I'll show you guys later on when I'm about to be done testing. So yeah, and we have made it, guys. So as you can see, we're past six hundred percent, still running, and this is all we have. So this is where we're at. We're at RTLs in. Um, if you want to see, uh, per bank is 324. Um, so yeah. And, um, yeah, voltages wise, 1.6, but high, but, uh, it is what it is. 1.4 TX still, 1.25 SA is what we needed. And, uh, VDD2 up to 1.6, which is completely safe again. Like I said, it's not a, it's not a CP voltage. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't care. So, yeah, that's uh that's stable.